this project, I've built a smart house installed with a burglar alarm system. First of all, before going into the details, I'll be explaining why we need it. Well, one of the most important things um, in our life is definitely for our family to be safe. So when we leave our home to go to work, for example, we want to feel assured that our family are safe and protected from harm. Plus, there's this comfort and relief that you can only get knowing that our belongings, and especially things that we want to keep uh, private, uh, or any other valuable items, are safe and sound. Installing burglar alarms, thus, are very effective solutions for security to our houses. Aside from being affordable, efficient burglar alarm systems would also minimize the chances of intruders, thieves, and robbers from entering our homes. For example, when the alarm goes off, they would not have much time to linger or stay around and they would acquire less of items or maybe they might even fear the risks of breaking in and run away. This is a working model of my house with a burglar alarm system. Now let's move on to the components used in this project. First of all, we have a buzzer. Obviously, it's needed for the sound. So it's this one. It will sound when it is triggered. Secondly, we have a pressure plate, which is this one. It is ideally installed on the doormat of the house entrance. And this is a simple pressure plate, which consists of two metal strips spaced apart. This alarm integrates an open circuit system because when an intruder steps on the mat accidentally and applies pressure, the pressure would push these two metal strips together and electricity would start to flow, completing the circuit and triggering the alarm. Third, we have a reed switch or also known as a magnetic door lock, which is this one. This is the reed switch or the magnetic door lock and like the pressure plate, this design integrates an open circuit system. So when the door is still closed, the magnet pulls the reed switch together and the circuit is complete. Electricity can flow through the circuit, powering the relays electromagnets so that the buzzer circuit can still remain open. However, when the magnet is moved by opening the door, the current is cut off and closes the relay, sounding the alarm. Fourthly, we have a motion detector, specifically a PIR or passive infrared sensor, which is this one. Um, so this PIR sensor detects for infrared waves or the body heat of warm-blooded living things in the house. First, we have an LDR or light dependent resistor. Uh, this light dependent resistor reads light intensity from the light source, in this case, the lasers. So these are the two LDRs that I used. And the lasers are this one and this one. To make more light beams, but with the least possible lasers, I installed mirrors so that the light could be reflected And if a light beam or ray is blocked, then the alarm would be triggered. So we know that there are disturbances or interferences um, detected in the house. Lastly, we have the GSM shield, which I will show in a moment. So the GSM shield will send and receive SMS. And in this case, I have used the SIM 800 um, inside here. I've used the SIM 800, which is basically a SIM card that will send as messages or SMS to the owner of the house. I'll now be explaining the code. So first, I included the libraries to provide my sketches with extra functionality and to initialize its instances right here. Um, then next, um, I have 
initialize the pins used both for digital and analog. Analog uh, can be seen from the A in the front while the rest, just numbers, are the digital. Then we move down here. Uh, the first one is the PIR state, which is for the infrared sensor. Uh, the read switch state is for the read switch, or also known as the magnetic door lock. As for the pressure pad, uh, I've named it as PP state. And for the LDR state, it's going to be the state of the first LDR, as, it's, as in its name. And for the uh, LDR2 state, it's going to be for the second LDR that I'm going to be using. Flag is going to be changed later accordingly, and is going to change um, based on the alarms, different types of alarms that's going to be triggered. Uh, I'll explain further more in detail uh, later down in the code. So now we move on to the void setup, which is only going to be run once. At first up here, I just set uh, the different pins as output or input. And then after that, I also set the pressure plate as high and flag as zero, which in this case uh, basically signifies that the house is safe. If not, there's going to be different numbers later, which we are going to change. Then um, we initialize the serial communications and then um, the next lines of codes over here are basically for the uh, GSM shield. Now moving on down into the void loop, which is going to be uh, run continuously again and again. We first uh, initialize the, the variables that we have declared before. Before we only declared it up here, but we didn't initialize it yet. So right now, we uh, connect it to the pins. Digital read um, for the pins that are connected in digital and analog read for those that are connected in analog. So we did it first for the PIR, or the passive infrared sensor, then we did it for the magnetic door lock, or the read switch, and then the pressure plate, and uh, lastly for the two LDRs which we're going to use. Now we're going to be making conditions based on the states um, of each variable. So previously the flag had been zero, as you can see here, but now we've changed it. So um, in this case, we changed the flag to one. And we also set the LED pin to high, so the LED on in the house is going to flash. Um, it's going to um, flash bright, and then after that, the next line is uh, to make the buzzer sound. Then we also print the warnings on the serial monitor. Uh, in this case, that uh, the pressure plant has detected applied pressure, and there's a warning. Then we send. Uh, SMS to the owner of the house and do this for 200 milliseconds. So you might be wondering why not just combine all these five conditions um, here, 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 and here, and here for the uh, pressure pad state, PIR state, read switch state, and so on. Why not just combine them together, all these five conditions, and just use the OR signs? Um, well, we actually need five separate conditions because if you see closely in each uh, loop, uh, in each uh, condition, uh, each thing that we print out to the serial monitor is actually different. See here, in the first uh, condition for pressure plate, uh, pressure, pressure pad, we had to print out that there's detected uh, applied pressure. For the second one, which is for the PIR state, uh, this is uh, specifically just for the infrared sensor. And for the read switch state, this is just particularly for the read switch um, warning that the front door is unlocked. As for the LDR, there are laser beam blockages. Um, the first one for laser 1 and the second one for laser 2. So we actually need uh, five separate conditions because each thing that we're going to be printing out to the serial monitor, and in fact, not just a serial monitor, to the, to the, uh, by SMS, it's going to be different. 
uh, based specifically on the components. Um, so moving on, we go to the read switch state. Uh, sorry, we go on to the PIR state, which is set. Uh, we set the flag as two in this case, and uh, digital write. LED pin high and pin speaker high. This is again just for uh, lighting up the LED and the buzzer, sounding the buzzer, and then warning them, uh, warning on the serial monitor that the infrared sensor has detected movement, and then after that, uh, conveying this message through SMS and repeatedly doing this for the separate conditions that we have. Now, for LDR, I had to actually use a separate program to, to determine this 800, which is basically the light intensity, the boundary of the light in intensity that, um, that I found through this program, light intensity check. So from its name, you can probably guess that, it, that uh, the serial monitor is going to print out the readings of the light intensities detected by the LDR. So I measured this in two cases, in the usual surroundings and when in dark, um, by covering my hands. And I got an average of roughly 800 to be the boundary. It may be different from, for, from yours. Um, and so in this case, if it reads below 800, we know that it's dark and the cause is Definitely because there, the light beams or the light rays from the source, which is the lasers, has been blocked and an intruder has trespassed into the house. Um, and then, moving on, lastly we have the else condition. Here, um, we have a case, as long as the house is safe, we'll constantly just keep the uh, LED as low so it's not going to light up and uh, the pin speaker as low so that means that the buzzer won't sound and we keep printing out that the house is safe this will be constantly printed out um, until the alarm is triggered and we never print out that the haze uh, and if the alarm is triggered, we never print out that the house is safe anymore because it isn't. If there is an intruder and the alarm is sounded and a few seconds later we print out that the house is safe, it would not make sense because the intruder could still be around the area. So we, const uh, so we just only constantly print that the house is safe but once the flag has been changed to a different number, it's never going to print that the house is safe anymore because we know that there's an intruder already and it's not going to be safe. So you might be wondering about this else case inside, uh, inside. Why would we need to print out the same things we did before again up here? So to answer this question, let's take this example. Let's say that the intruder has stepped on the pressure pad. The pressure is applied and this triggers the alarm. But now think about it. Does the alarm only just warn once over here? Does it only print once? No, right? Because it will keep warning. A normal alarm would keep warning and warning you continuously that there is someone, an intruder in the house. So this will keep happening until a new warning will override the previous one. So let's say that the intruder has made it to the entrance, the door entrance. Then in this case, he opens the door and since the read switch is now open, the current is cut off and this sounds the alarm. Now the warning changes from that the pressure pad, there's been de detected applied pressure, it changes to read switch, th that the front door is now unlocked. So um, out of the loop, we just print out a line to make it more organized and this is the end of the program. This is the end of the video on my Arduino Smart House project and I really hope you've enjoyed it.